morning. <clears throat> it's nowhere near preacher calling or preacher election, but I just wanted each one of you to know this morning how blessed we are to be your friend and to be your pastor. As I went around this, hey Bailey, she's away. <laughs> As I went around this morning and shook hands and those I hadn't spoke to, I began to think of different times we each have together and different times we've been together. And nothing is as special, listen to me, as what's going to take place here today. Because today as we've come together in this form, in this fashion, we've opened up to let God have his will and have his way with us in a whole new way. In a new day. And uh, it'll never be like this. Thank you. Thank you for choosing Harmony as your church this morning to worship and to pray. Um, Sunday school at 10, worship service at 11, dinners at 5.30. Today, play practice. You ladies want to? Play practice is at 4 today. Um, I'm not going to give you an end time because I don't know. Um, but I'm really excited to play next Sunday. Um, your children, our Harmony children, have been working so, so, so hard. So. Thank you. Play practice at 4. No lines have to have them remembered. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, pickleball uh, every Monday night, 7 to 8.30. Thursday, the 7th, is the ladies' lunch at 11.30 in the Family Life Center. The 9th is vertical students, 6 through 12, the Georgia Mountain Food Bank, uh, 8.45. They'll be leaving here, 8.30, 8.45, going over there, work till 12 noon. Um, December the 10th is the Christmas play. Desserts will follow. We asked you to bring your favorite dessert. Have a special visitor coming by afterwards, so uh, have that. Uh, Angel Tree, uh, there's some more on there again today. Uh, Y'all have been doing a great job taking those. Uh, Mel, do you have any idea how many angels has been put up already? Yeah, there's been a lot. There's been a lot. Probably going to be our largest year with the Angel Tree. Y'all are doing a great job taking them. Let's try to get all those taken today that's out there. Um, if you can't take one and want to make a monetary donation, please see Melba or Sheila, give that to them, and uh, they'll be responsible or take the responsibility of getting some gifts bought. Um, if you have any questions, uh, Melba's phone number's on here. Uh, when you bring those, when you take them off, sign the clipboard put the, uh, beside the angel number and tell them that you have it, and when you bring it back, keep that angel stapled, taped, or whatever to the gift so we can sort them out. Uh, and those are due back in the 17th. So please have those back in by the 17th. Chris, uh, desserts after the Christmas play, we've covered that. Christmas cards are due uh, December the 13th. They will be handed out on Sunday morning the 17th. So please get those in. Uh, try your very best to put them in alphabetical order if you can. Makes it easier on Becky and the team as they separate those. I know uh, uh, Becky and Teresa sorted Wednesday night for a couple hours and trying to get a head start on it. Um, if you go in the upstairs Sunday school room or you use that room, I think it's Tyler's class, please be real careful with those tables. They've got everything sorted out, so be careful with those. Uh, but get those in. If you need names, addresses, or anything, please reach out to us or Melba or Joey or Betty Ann, reach them. Um, and then the ladies' luncheon, they need you to uh, reach out to Joyce Monkus with any questions on that. This week's prayer list, we uh, definitely want to remember uh, those this week, uh, Tabitha's had surgery this week. Uh, Sean started his uh, treatments this week to loose, loosen the muscles in his leg. And uh, we seen him last night when Alabama won. He was almost ready to dance. And, uh, yeah, he, he was the only person in the uh, Performing Arts Center at Dawson County that was happy uh, last night. Oh, so maybe there was three people that was Alabama fans. But congratulations, Sean. We want to tell you we know you've stuck with him through thick and thin. Great job. Uh, but pray for Sean, uh, not only because he's an Alabama fan, but pray for him <laughs> because he's getting better every day, right, Sean? Getting stronger every day. So uh, keep remembering uh, Coach Kajanko, Ray Gober, Leslie Grizzle, Darlene Davis, uh, Alyssa Motes, uh, Brendan Ottinger, Linda Townley, Joe Wallace, Kisa Stevens, Lori Grant, James Kickliner, Bill House, Betty Ann Bearden, Kay Wiley, uh, Sharon Ackenberry and Gene Addis. Um, Gene goes back this week to see if he can 
have his catheter removed and maybe get back to church. Is there any others we need to make mention of on the prayer list or add to or take off? Abby's last name now? Libertor. I'll ask you how to spell that later. <laughs> they say people that can't spell is real smart. I must be a genius. Uh, anyone else? All right, let's keep remembering uh, Taylor and Michaela this week. They got to come home yesterday. Uh, when they get here, we'll let them give name and weight and all that stuff. But let's just keep praying. Mom and baby are doing real well. And uh, keep praying for them as they... Uh, start this journey out as parents, and if you've seen Taylor uh, with Baker, or you've seen him with any of these other kids around here, he's going to make a great dad, So, and we know Michaela will make a great mom, so uh, just keep praying for them as they've made it home. Anybody else? All right, if you would, uh, Bethel Live Nativity is next weekend, December the 8th and 9th, 6 to 9 p.m., um, I don't know if there's a group together, anybody going to go do this as a group, but if you reach out. I'm sure everybody will put together and go the same time. Uh, dress warm, take plenty of clothes and blankets. Uh, this is one time a year they do this, and they do a great job with it half for years. So uh, if you want to see something special. want to take a minute to recognize those that was in the Tiny Tiger uh, musical last night. Is that what it was? Little? They were tiny. Some of those kids were little. When they would open their mouth and start to sing, I would wonder, how are those kids got that much voice in them? But if you were here and you were in the Little Tiger uh, promotion last night, the play, would you stand up or ra raise your hand? Step forward, raise your hand. Carson's not here, but Carson done a great job. Bellamy. We had five kids from Harmony Church in the production last night. And uh, let me tell you what got me about the whole thing. Y'all can be seated and step back. What got me about the whole thing was when we walked in, the first thing we seen hanging was a big white cross. And I thought, wow, this is going to be amazing already. But they went through the whole story of the birth of Jesus. Not only that, but they used it in a way to love others, to grow others, and to show others that no matter how mean you are in this world, Jesus can still love you. And I thought it was a great job by our faculty, our staff, our, our kids. And so let's just give the whole uh, Little Tiger group a hand this morning. There's not many times at a school play you want to shout amen, but there were several last night that I just wanted to shout amen because they've done a great job. So, uh, And uh, we just appreciate them for everything they do. Any other announcements? Great. What time is today's show? Three. 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 Today's three. at three. And eat before you go because uh, they won't let you eat in the gym or in the performing arts. But it was great. Thank you for that. If you'll stand to your feet, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We'll turn it over to the musicians. I can already tell you you're going to be blessed today just from the presence of the people we see. Uh, Miss Tina does a great job. And, you know, if. Uh, how many of you have ever been just aggravated by something? Like, can't, can't get a, a spot? Of, there you go. <laughs> I'm not even going to. Th those two that raised their hand, I'm not even going to acknowledge. <laughs> yeah. But you've got, that, you've got that shirt you can't get a stain out of, or that shoe you can't get a knot out of the string, or something you've just tried and tried and tried to do and you can't get it to happen. But try being a pastor and trying to get someone to speak and, and, and sitting at a table on Wednesday night trying to talk to someone and he just looks at you with a straight face. But Miss Tina comes along and Miss Tina can get them to stand in front of the church and play and, and, and sing and do music and, and what a blessing it is 
to have the talent we have in this church. As I mentioned, five last night could have been the lead part of that play at any point in time. Uh, you have some children here that are very blessed and very talented, and you're going to see that again today. Don't take it for granted. Go to them, shake their hand, tell them you're praying for them, tell them you're excited about the gift God's given them, and encourage them to keep doing it. Because let me tell you, it's not always popular. It's not always popular at school to go and say, well, I sing gospel music, or I play the fiddle, or I play the violin. That may not be the most popular thing. Everybody wants to be the guy that just beat Madden and, and you know, is, is online and beating all these other teams. But what about standing and singing and, and bringing somebody's heart to the pure uh, uh, moment of crying because they're thinking about their salvation because you're playing a chord on an instrument or singing a verse of a song that reminds them of the day they were saved. That's the power these kids have. That's the power they have. And you need to go by, shake their hand, love on them, and tell them you encourage them and you appreciate them. We love you today. We thank you for being here. We ask you, if you would, as you give today, that you give with a true heart and a loving heart, knowing that we're going to do the uh, very best of our duties to use it for the upbuilding of the kingdom of the Lord. We just thank you for being here today. Uh, where's Ronnie? You lead us in a word of prayer, please, sir. and everyone that is gathered here today. Lord, go with us and guide and direct us. Forgive us where we fail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Page 281, 281.
Church, pre K and below. and takes care of all of us and takes care of making sure that we are keeping him in the forefront of everything. So thank you for these being with us today and y'all just pray for him. Merry Christmas. Isn't God good? We are so thankful to be here to sing for you this morning, and um, we practiced this week, and we thought we were just going to sing all Christmas, but, you know, God really has burdened uh, our hearts, really, with a different song, so we're going to sing a couple Christmas songs, and then we're going to sing one other, but you just pray this morning. I have been, it's been heavy on my heart through this Christmas season, it seems like every year he puts a song and that just, I dwell on that. And this year it's been Silent Night. And, you know, I thought on that night, 2,000 years ago, God broke the silence, really, when he sent us his son. So um, if you don't know him today, I can't think of a better, better time to get to know him than the Christmas season. Who do you think would believe such a thing? Well, here's hoping to heaven that you do. There are people who are whispering and the rumors are running wild. There's a woman, she's not married, but she's gone. The baby's father is the Holy Ghost. And who do you think could believe such a thing? Could believe that the story is true? Who do you think could believe such a thing? Well, here's hoping. saying she had the baby in a barn in Bethlehem and the star moved around the heavens until it stopped right over them then some shepherd Could be 
could believe that this story is true. Who do you think could believe such a thing? Well, here's hoping to heaven you do. Oh, and who do you think could believe such a thing? Could believe that this story is true. And who do you think could believe such a thing? Well, here's hoping to heaven you do. Well, here's hoping to heaven you do. If I had been the only one, he'd have done it just for me and for you and you and you and you. So you listen. For no other reason, I'm why he came. On that first Christmas morning, it was evident to see. That this tiny baby was holy deity. How could he leave his father and come to the earth to be born in a stable of such lowly birth? There was no birth was a promise of mercy and grace for he knew he would die on a cross in my place for no other reason I am why His birth bought rejoicing to the shepherds in the field as they heard the angels sing peace and goodwill. He had come to save the whole world from sin's misery. But if I had been the only one he would have come just for me for no other reason i am why he came his birth was a promise of mercy and grace for he knew he would die on a cross in my place for no other reason I am why he came for he knew he would die on a cross in my place for no
And uh, my sweet dad has just, I mean, we have really had a time. But I'm here to give God the glory because this week, my dad has collapsed about 34 times in the last month. He'll stand up, he collapses. That's it. He's out cold. Doctors couldn't figure it out. They kept saying it was the infection, which you all know we've been battling. Um, but he was just in the hospital a couple of days ago. And the doctor said, you know what? I think the Lord's just blessing you so much that you don't need that medicine anymore. You don't need your blood sugar medicine anymore. You don't need your blood pressure medicine anymore. And we thought, oh, Lord, please don't take him off all the medicine. The doctor said, yeah, we're going to take it away. And I, I'm here to, to say today that my father has not collapsed, not one time. Not only that, but he rode to work with me all day on Friday. And he is at his church serving the Lord this morning. So I just want to give him praise. See if you've ever been here before. I didn't have the strength to raise up my hands. I couldn't pray my best prayer through my circumstances. Oh, but his name I kept on calling. The narrow path I kept on walking. I tried to sing a happy song. Oh, but when it looked like hope was gone, that's when God's love it made me strong. Oh, I came through another battle. I thank you, Lord. Think about it. I thought I would go down in the middle of the war. But his mercy surrounded me when I made mistakes. And when I took all I could take, he stepped in and made a way. I came through another battle. And Lord, I give you the praise. tries to steal the joy in my life but what he fails to remember the Savior's blood it makes me smile fiery darts he throws my way reminds me that I'm still saved and when it looks like the end that's when God's victory began Lord, I give you the praise. Oh, I came through another battle. I thank you, Lord. I thought I would go down in the middle of the war. But his mercy surrounded me when I made mistakes. And when I took all I could take, he stepped in and made a way. I came through another battle. And Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I came through another battle. And Lord, I give you the praise. Yeah, 
Listen to this. God works, amen. Amen. I want to ask you this question. Be honest with yourself today. A little over a year ago, a year and a half, they came here and sang in revival, and I want to know how many of you selfishly prayed that we need them singing in our church more often. I didn't selfishly pray. I selfishly begged God. I did. I selfishly begged him, God, and, 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 and Christy, I don't want to embarrass you at all, but when she sang that night, I said, God, we need a voice like that in the choir to go along with everybody else. Little did I know that I needed her family and my family to fight the battles we fought over the last month and the last years. But listen to this. I didn't know what God had planned for today. I didn't even know they were singing today. I sat at uh, Brent and Christie's house the other night, and I said, man, it's been a while since y'all sang. And she goes, yeah, it sure has. Did you know you were going to be here today? <laughs> she keeps secrets. But God was working on a message about movement. And about when the movement starts, that somehow or another Satan always finds a way. And my message was, are you that one that calms the water? Are you the one that stops? And I realized this today, that if, if I got up here and tried to do anything of, of what I wanted to do, I'd be stopping that ripple of the water today. Because there's a spirit here. Amen? Amen. There is a movement that's already started. Listen to what Paul said in the book of Acts. You follow along with me just for a minute. Acts 17, and this was the exact scripture I was going to use today. Now, I'm still going to preach this message at some time because I put too much work into it not to. (laughs) But this is is what he said in the uh, uh, 17th chapter, the 16th verse. It says, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. Amen. How many of you had your spirit stirred this morning? How many of you, listen to this, there's something about a stirring. My wife the other night said, I'm going to make you some hot cocoa. And I said, that's fine, I'll sit here and wait on it. And she brought it to me and I said, you know what this needs? Boy, I need some marshmallows. And she said, well, I offered them. And she come over with a handful. Now, we're not the cleanliest people at our house, but she came over. And if y'all know my wife, she went there. Splashed on my white t-shirt. Those marshmallows, she put them in there. But listen to this. It wasn't the same just on top. So I took my finger and I stuck in there and I stirred it just a little bit. Listen to me real close. If God's sticking his finger down in there today and he's stirring a little bit, guess what your pastor's going to give him time to keep stirring? I'm going to give it time for the marshmallows to melt. You see, guys, that's when it makes a difference. When you give a little time, you don't eat them all off the top. You let them out. But it says his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city uh, wholly given to adultery. Idolatry. He, he seen them worshiping something other. And so if you, you bounce around and you get over to the 22nd, and listen what happened. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. And he goes on to read to him now and he says this, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. And that's in caps in my Bible. I don't know about you, but it's in big letters because he wanted to bring attention to it that he said you set at altars and you worship an unknown God. Listen to this though. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, Him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that He is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hand, neither is worship with men's hands as though He needeth anything, seeing He giveth to all life and breath all things, and hath made, listen, one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations, that they should seek the Lord if he happily they might fall fall after uh, him and find through he not be far away from every one of us. He's not far away. 
And that song today about battles, I can go through these notes and I can show you to where that's exactly what we were going to talk about. The battles of, of, of purpose, the battles of meaning, and I'm just going to cover one of them today. But the woman at the well felt worthless, felt undone. She felt like she needed uh, uh, something other in her life. She had been through man after man after man. Her five husbands, I believe the Bible says, when all she needed was to sit at the well and speak to Jesus. And he overcome that battle in her life. And that one woman went out, and this is movement right here. That one woman went out and she began to talk to him. If you want to read about it, it's in the, the book of John. We can go over there if you want in the, the fourth chapter. And you get down and you go all the way over to the uh, 39th verse and you'll find this is several verses after uh, the 26th where she, when Jesus told her who he really was. But over in the 39th it says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. Many believed because the woman had said it. But listen to this. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own words. I can stand up here today and tell you about my life and how Jesus spoke to me. But you're the one fighting the battle right now and you need to hear the Word of God. You need to hear Him speak to you. And there's a movement. Y'all have got another song. I know you do. There's a movement that started here today. And I'm not going to try to preach and stop it. And I know you say, Preacher, well, you've done preach to us. No, I'm just encouraging the movement today. I'm just kicking my feet. I'm going to sit on the side of the pool. I was thinking about the pool of Bethesda, Brother Jerry. If I'd have been there, there'd been so many saved and healed because I'd have been the guy standing on the dock uh, uh, kicking my feet saying, I want to see Jesus again. I want to see the works of God. Church, I want to tell you something today. There's a movement about this place, a, a drawing power, and when it gets started moving, it flows uh, breast to breast. If you can't feel it today, uh, as the old saying says, if that don't light your fire, your wood's wet. I want to tell you something today. Uh, forget about your wood uh, and get at the feet of the cross today. There's a fire burning. There's a spirit moving. Church, I want you to know today, you may get out of here early. You may get out of here so early you say, man, let them sing next Sunday. But I want you to know this today. You can leave here early, but I want you to leave here satisfied. I want you to leave here satisfied. Oh, I ain't never walked out of Golden Corral or the Cracker Barrel or nowhere unsatisfied. <laughs> Brother, and I'd sit there till I ordered the apple pie. I'd sit there till I got it all. Uh, and I, I, Allison, that I was satisfied. I left that school last night uh, uh, satisfied. Uh, I left my home uh, uh, this morning uh, uh, satisfied that if I never walked back in it, that everything was going to be okay. Uh, and when I leave this church today, uh, I want to leave satisfied uh, that if we never meet like this again, uh, you'll know and I'll know uh, that I'm satisfied today with the results of the Lord. What about you? Is there something? Is there a battle? We preached last week about salvation. You may have went all week and you said, boy, I just didn't get settled. You know why? God's giving you another opportunity. This altar is open. God called you to be parents. I'm, I'm going to cover one more topic. So many of us say, God used me. God used me. And then we sit on our hands when God wants to use us. God used you to be a parent. God used you to be a mom or a dad. Now let movement show your child what it means to be a parent. Oh, if you've not prayed for your children in an altar of repentance, you better hit this altar today because there's nothing more important than you can give your child than the covering of the prayer. Amen? Where are you at today, church? There's a movement. There's a movement. I want you all to stand just for a minute. While they sing this next song, and feel free to move one to another. You may want to go hug somebody. You may want to thank them for being in that battle with you. Because I want to tell you something. When Satan attacks the righteous, guess what he does? He attacks full force. He don't try Allison just to wiggle in. He goes in there and he disrupts it all. 
He says, I don't want you to know you got friends. I don't want you to know you got a church family. I'm going to pull you out of your church family. I'm going to cast you over here on the road, uh, traveling around. Uh, but you know what God says? God says, I got somebody else to love you. I got somebody else to lift you up. I got somebody else to pat you on the back. I got somebody else. Uh, uh, because they're not afraid to move, they want me to use them. God wants to use you today, church. Preacher, why are you so tore up? Because I love God this morning, don't you? I love my Savior. And I want to be used by Him. And I want to move through Him. Sing, if you would. This altar's open. Sunday morning underneath the steeple Can look like a bunch of perfect people But underneath the suits and the smiling eyes are folks who've walked through some hard times just looking for a home a place to belong a little peace a little hope and so thankful these old doors still swing open to the nobodies and the could have been the disillusioned and the doubters Every life train erected by sin, every down and outer. For the lonely and the one who's weak, the fool-hearted with a stubborn streak. For the soul who doesn't even know what they need. For the mixed up, messed up, broken people like me. It's a place where everybody's welcome, a glimpse of glory this side of heaven. It's where the weary come for a taste of grace, and Jesus never turns anyone away. Where everyone's a friend, knowing where you've been, and there's no shame, and there's no judging. Just family always busy love and the nobodies and the could have been, the disillusioned and the doubters, every life train wrecked by sin, every down and out of for the lonely and the one who's weak, the fool hearted with a stubborn streak. For the soul who doesn't even know what they need. For the mixed up, messed up, broken people like me. And all oh, the ones he came to redeem. The whosoever. John three sixteen. Nobody's in the could have been the disillusioned and the doubters. Every life train erected by sin, every down and out of hope for the lonely and the one who's weak, the fool hearted with a stubborn streak. For the soul who doesn't even know it's him they need. For the mixed up, messed up, broken people, all the desperate, hurting, searching people like me. The nobodies and the could have been. The disillusioned and the doubters. Every life train erected by sin. Every down and out of hope. For the lonely and the one who's weak. The fool hearted with a stubborn streak. For the soul who doesn't even know it's him that you need. For the mixed-up, messed-up, broken people like me.
let you know that could be our theme song. For the nobodies and the could have beens. I want you to know when it comes to pastors, there's far more better than me. But God said, I'm going to take a nobody and make a difference. I'm going to take somebody that nobody else wants that sit idle for a little while and I'm going to make a difference. But then he took the broken and the weak and the ones that, that needed it, the ones that were just passing by and found us by happenstance or those that was on a football team and he brought them in and those, listen, that's been here your whole life but you're just now getting to enjoy the workings and the growth of a church. Church, I want you to know something this morning. You've got something special and there's somebody among you today that needs to know about it, needs to feel it. There's somebody here today that needs to feel like they belong. And they're waiting on you. And listen, you've got the stone in your hand. And God's saying, throw it and stir the water. God's saying, uh, skip it across. It's up to you. And you're saying, but this is my rock. This is, this is my Jesus. I want you to know something. When I first started out, I had the hardest time sharing Jesus because I wanted all of it to myself. But you know what I found out? The more I talk about Him, the more He pours into me. The more I pour out, the more He gives me. My cup's been overflowing all morning, Brother Jerry, and I don't know, you might not get out of here early. You might be later than ever because I want you to know something today. Somebody needs to have a come to Jesus Somebody needs to have a talk. Somebody needs to grow from this very service. Who is it? I don't know. You tell me. God's already dealing with you. Who is it? Where are you? Why? Don't you want to come? And let Jesus just love you. Let harmony love you. Josh, have you got a song today? Tina, you come. Huh? Come, Jesus, come. All right. Come, Jesus, come. Listen. If you're standing and your legs are tired and you want to sit, then you sit. But if you're standing and you just want to sit because Satan's saying sit down, you're going to let him win the battle because he said if I get them seated, then they got to stand up again. As a pastor, the hardest thing to do, there, there's, listen, listen to me real close. There's nothing hard about salvation and repentance. You know that? There's nothing hard about it. You know why? Because I don't have nothing to do with it. The hardest part is getting you convinced that you need to take a step of faith and trust God. Ain't that right, Brother Dwayne? That's the hardest part of a preacher's job is getting people to buy in enough to say, I want to step out and I want to trust this Jesus. I'm going to trust this preacher and what he's saying, that when I get there, Jesus will be there. That's the hardest part. But I want to assure you today, I'm not giving you some false warranty. I'm not giving you some false hope. If you step out, he'll meet you here. Amen. He'll meet you here. And he'll take care of all your troubles, all your trials, and all your needs. Listen to this song, please. If it's you, move. If it's, if, if it's you that's supposed to go, then go. Listen to the words. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray come Jesus come let today be the day sometimes I feel like I'm gonna break but I'm holding on to a hope that won't so come Jesus come we've been waiting so long for the day you return 
to heal every hurt and right every wrong. We need you right now. Come and turn this around. Deep down I know this world isn't home. So come Jesus, come. Come Jesus, come. There'll be no war. There'll be no chains. When Jesus comes, let today be the day. He'll come for the weak and the strong just the same. We will believe. In the power of his name. So come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long for the day you return to heal every hurt and right every wrong. We need you right now. Come and turn this around. stand face to face come lay it all down cause it might be today the time is right now there's no need to wait your past will be washed by rivers of grace so come Jesus come we've been waiting so long for the day you return to heal every hurt and right every wrong we need you right now come and turn this around be here today and you say keep going y'all keep singing you say well you don't know me I said this last week you may be right I might not know you personally but the scared fact is today Jesus don't know you and you don't know him as your personal savior you don't have the peace that you need in your life Caroline, Katie, Jenna, can y'all come do? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Because I want, I want to tell you, before you leave today, I want you to know there's a church that'll pray with you. There's people that'll love you. 
But listen to this. The most important thing you can take out the doors of Harmony Church, not the fact that this pastor loves you, not the fact that these members love you, but Jesus will love you uh, forever and always. The Bible says He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I want you to know about Him today. I want you to know that there's a Jesus that is standing. Listen to the, uh, the importance of this. He is standing before the Father today making an intercession, Brother Sean. He's saying, there's movement, Father. There's movement. There's still cause. There's still purpose. There's movement down here in this little church on the side of the road. So many people overlook. Some pass by, don't even think about. But today, the Father in heaven is looking down and saying, there's movement. And I'm so close. Father, I am so close. Let my spirit pour out a little more. Can you praise Him with pure heart this morning? Can you say that everything in my house is in order? Husbands, I'm going to ask you what the book of Joshua says. It says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can you tell me your house is in order today? Can you tell me, men, today that my house is in order? That everybody under my roof, if you can't say that, then as the husband, as the man, as the leader of that home, you should be the first one down here. You should be the one in the altar. And if you can't say today, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want you to know how important that is. Listen to me. I know it's not Father's Day, but how important it is uh, for a father uh, to be a leader in the home today. I'm going to go this far and, and tell you this. We've got too many dads playing Xbox and PSPs and all those things while mamas are raising children. Amen. We got them. Listen, go to the mall. And you see grown men in there buying video games, uh, uh, standing over at the wall, playing with each other, still in their uh, high-top Nikes in their sweatpants, uh, hadn't even got dressed up for the day. I want you to know something today. It's time Jesus got a hold uh, of the men of our nation, uh, and He made them men uh, uh, like raised me up. Uh, he made them men that feared God uh, and sought out after Him. You want to tell me what will bless a pastor to see an altar full of men praying for the safety of their home. Amen. Because right behind that altar full of men, you'll see a sea of wives that are praying for their husbands. And then right after that, whoa, this is where it gets good. You'll see the children wondering what's going on. What's going on? Marriage is not 50-50. It's 100-100. This altar is meant for someone today. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you how you'll love the broken, the messed up, the weak, the scattered brain. That's me. That's me today. Sing if you would. Your pastor's done, but this altar's for you. of weary is your burden weighing heavy is it all too much to carry let me tell you about my jesus do you feel that empty feeling because shame's done all it's stealing and you're desperate for some healing let me tell you about my jesus away where there ain't no way rises up from an empty grave ain't no sinner that he can't save let me tell you about my jesus his love is strong and his grace is free and the good news is i know that he can do for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my jesus and let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Who can wipe away?
away the tears from broken dreams and wasted years and tell the past to disappear oh let me tell you about my jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could he could work it out for your good Jesus changed your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Who would take my cross to Calvary? Pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Ooh. Makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Anybody have anything anyway? I used to get in the car and ask my wife, well, how was that? And I'd get a brutal truth a lot of times that I didn't want. Well, you've done better. Or I've heard better, meaning that it was. So you know what I've done to fix that? She drives separate to church now. So I get in the car, look in the mirror, and say, that was a good job today. <laughs> but I will tell you this, that was a lot better than what I had intentionally had because we followed the Lord today and we used Him and let Him work. If you've enjoyed this service, say amen. amen. If you're going to build off this service, say amen. amen. Lift your hands towards heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're free to go.